Okay, so we can start, right? Okay, so welcome everyone. Welcome to my speech, Site Reliability Engineering. Um, really short introduction about myself. I'm Luca. I'm a product owner in the uh, data analytics and AI uh, team in Cisco. We, uh, we work mainly on uh, conversational AI. Uh, we, we, we built and designed the uh, voice assistant, for example, for the TV box. We uh, designed and we built the SAM chatbot, which is now integrated into the MySwissCom app. So we are doing conversational AI to try to uh, um, speed up the uh, request from customer by automating everything, classifying, and so on. And those are some of my so sports with boards and some of my uh, hobbies. Um, so I want to start this presentation with a short story. So <coughs> last year, a small software company had been working tirelessly on a new product for months. So the product was a revolutionary tool that promised to change the industry, and the team was so eager to ship it to the world. The development team was coding for months and months and months, and the DevOps team was creating infrastructure, automating the pipelines, and all these kind of works. You know pretty well. However, as soon as the product hit the market, the team began to receive reports of reliability problems. So users were experiencing frequent crashes, unexpected exceptions, errors. The team was lost in fixing the issue and not able to introduce new features anymore. So the DevOps team were often on call. They were paged during day and night. As it turns out, the company has been so focused on developing, just developing the application, um, that they hadn't put any effort into reliability. So observability was not really in place, was not standardized, and uh, the platform was suffering of flaky, alert, flaky alerts, and um, they were not consistent and not helpful. So without a strategy, the team was unable to see what was happening inside the system and diagnose problems. So what happened was the beginning of a war between uh, the development team and the DevOps team. And the development team um, wanted to introduce and deliver new features uh, to keep up with the competition. Um, to do so, they had to, again, sacrifice um, stability in order to speed up the releases. The DevOps teams, on the other side, wants to increase the stability as much as possible by slowing down new releases and work on infrastructure, on tech debt, pipelines, and automation. In the end, the service was not reliable and slow to adapt to market. So the company had to find the solution or everything was lost. So with this story, I really want to emphasize reliability and what it is, but what really is reliability? So how can we describe reliability? So here I have three examples. So for example, Gmail, I guess, most of you are using Gmail, right? How many times have you seen Gmail down or was not responsive or was not working? I think really a few times, right? Also another example, like a more Swiss one, the SBB app, I think it's really like a core service, right? For, the, for them, it's really like a crucial service. So it's not so often down. It can happen, but not so often. <laughs> and I also guess that e-banking, you're all using, it, it's always up, right? It's really, yeah. Yeah, that's why, I mean, this example is like, you know, going down. Okay, but anyway, it's something that you really would like to have always up, right? Should be reliable, okay? Yeah. So, for these kind of services, let's say that we want to increase reliability, okay? How do we increase reliability? So one of the frequent jokes in IT is don't touch running system. But can we really do it? I think no, because right now we cannot really add any new feature. So does it make sense? No, because this limits our business. So anyway, most, most reliability problems will come also from changes. And so that's why we want to introduce new feature. But this will introduce new changes. That means this will introduce new reliability problems. So the company 
from this story, started to look around and so on, and one of the developers came up with this idea of trying out SRE and some SRE discipline. And um, what really is, so SRE can be one member of the dev team, can be one dedicated role. It's a, it's a, it's a discipline, it's not really um, that strict, so you can read the site. And why do you need a new role, or why do we need to do this kind of role? Uh, I think that you need someone in charge of it because if nobody's really in charge, then nobody is, okay? So you need someone that really take care of that. And the official definition of SRE is this one from Google. So they invented the discipline. Uh, and it's what happens when you treat operational uh, operations as a software problem, okay? So instead of a clear division between ops and dev, or something in between like DevOps, uh, you have software engineers also working on operational uh, problems. I change it a bit because I think it deserves also another uh, definition and it's, uh, it's, for me, SRE is a discipline. When you accept that reliability is a feature and it's one of the most important features. Why? For me, it's pretty clear that if your service, let's say, you can even have the best API in the world, but if they are not reliable, well, customer are unhappy, first of all, you will lose the customer, so this, uh, you, will lo you, you will have a loss in revenue. And even worse, sometimes can be that you have also customer churn, so they complain about you on social media. That's even worse. Um, so some, uh, sorry for the wall of text, but those are some of the uh, key topics for an SRE. I just highlighted some of them because we don't have that much time, and I just want to discuss about some of those topics, okay? So for um, SRE, we said that reliability, so is in charge in reli reliability. So how do we measure reliability? And um, how do we set the proper target for reliability? Um, does it mean that the service needs to be 100% up? So I don't think so, because this is not the right reliability target. So nothing is 100% uh, reliable in this world. So only pacemaker or almost 100%, nothing else. So 100% is really the wrong reliability target. And uh, if you think about your network at home, Wi-Fi, 4G, 5G, nothing is 100% reliable. So we need to set the proper reliability target. This is an example. Uh, so this is a table uh, from Wikipedia. Uh, from, yeah, Wikipedia. Um, so some examples on how much time of downtime you have when you set the reliability target. And as you can see, um, if you set something too high, like five nines, you have like five minutes. Have you ever been on call with other engineers to try to debug and figure out what's going on? Five minutes are nothing, okay? So be really wise when you decide your reliability target. <coughs> so for measuring the reliability target, by the way, we need something that we can measure, that we can quantify, okay? And for that, let's introduce the SLI concept. SLI is a service level indicator, okay? And like this is a bit abstract, what it is. Um, so one, those are all examples of uh, SLI, how to define them. Uh, if you have a service based on request response, maybe availability and latency are important for you. Um, especially if you have some core services, availability is pretty important. Uh, if you have some data process, then can be the correctness or freshness, some ML ops, maybe application or so on, they check the data. Or maybe storage can be throughput, uh, if you have maybe a streaming app. Those are all examples, there are many of them. So you can redefine the SLI as you want. So those are some real examples, let's say. So it can be a proportion of get request, um, uh, the status code of, of an API call, okay? And um, also, uh, I wanted to highlight this one. It's always said measure at the load balancer because it's really like you really need to put yourself in the customer shoes, okay? So you really need to think, okay, how our service acts from the outside. Once you define this, then the SLI is pretty simple. So this is the just the difference between the good events and valid events, and that's a percentage. So it's a percentage because 
Uh, you can define many SLI, and they are all are the same. Um, so the, it's, it's easy to compare SLI. And to make a concrete example, it's really easy. I think most of you, I mean, they know or they use Prometheus. That's a really simple example, super simple. It's just the proportion of uh, good events divided by all events. Now that we have an SLI, okay, what can we do? Uh, so <laughs> uh, I need, we need to introduce uh, the, um, the concept of SLO, which is the target. So SLO is the uh, objective that you want to reach with this SLI. So let's say that we have an avail availability SLI. We want to reach 99% of availability, for example. Um, SLO are usually uh, based uh, like a moving window of like 28 days, usually 28, uh, because it's this balance weeks and weekends, for example, it's usually, usually 28 days. And with that said, finally, we can define our SLO as something like this, um, something easy to understand. And it's like, okay, we want to fail only one request, uh, one under um, over 10 requests, for example. And this is our uh, reliability target. So this is our SLO. Um, now we said, okay, this example said 99%. Okay, what about the remaining 1%? What are we doing with that? Um, yeah, that's pretty simple. The 1% remaining is the error budget. So the error budget is a new concept uh, in SRE that we, that we uh, it means, okay, we can fail on 1% of the time, okay? And as you can see here, there are some examples. Uh, we can, for example, in this, uh, in this 1%, we can release new feature. We can expect some system change. We can plan some downtime for uh, upgrading other stuff. Um, we also need to consider inevitable failure uh, in outdoor network. For example, if we're using some external API, we also need to check before setting our SLO, of course, we need to check the SLO of the service. Let's say that we're using Azure, AWS, they, they also have an uh, um, they, they also usually have SLO or availability target. And of course, they're not 100%. Uh, you can also do some risky experiments uh, during this, uh, in, in this time. Uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, there are many stuff that you can do and uh, like I showed before in this huge wall of text, um, you can also, uh, you can also have, mm, try out many new stuff or reduce technical depth or so on. <coughs> and uh, yeah, those are also some examples and the, um, with this 1% can also be uh, that, you, uh, that you use it for maintenance. So in fact, what we are, let's say, doing uh, in Cisco um, or in our team, so the SLO are managed by the product owner. So the product owner, they own the SLO because they really understand uh, how the API works. They really understand the problem and they can set the proper reliability target. Okay, so they decide in the end how to spend this error budget. And, uh, and they also are, let's say, forced uh, to act when the error budget, budget completely run out. Okay, let's say that we burn, constantly burn the error budget and we run out of this 1%, then it's clear that we need to work on reliability instead of new features. Um, this is just an example of, um, so this is a classical model, right, with SLA. So usually, so SLA was, uh, I mean, still is, but the, uh, one of the way to define a contract with clients. Uh, and, and there you really set a reliability target, which is, let's say, fixed, okay? So you sign a contract and you say, okay, we will be 99.9% uh, of the reliability target is 99.9%, okay? In that case, let's say that you um, are running your services and then you break these rules or so you're outside this reliability, then of course there are some financial penalties, uh, the customer complain, uh, he's unhappy, teams burn out because needs to uh, uh, fix all this reliability problem immediately because there are some financial penalties. So, yeah, 
this doesn't really work that well. Instead, with the SLO, it's something that you can really adjust. So it's something a bit more, um, there is a target, but you can really shift it while uh, developing the, um, uh, the solution. And the error budget is something that can also change. Can also change. Can also be that we adjust the SLO. Uh, we adjust the SLO while uh, um, the API is in production. Okay. So if we set an SLO which is too loose, then we can shrink it. We can let's say um, uh, have a more challenging SLO, or uh, can be reevaluated. So this is an example of uh, some of our so one of our dashboards with some SLO. We have the core services, for example, and lucky enough, we had a problem in uh, the other days. So as you can see, the red line. So <laughs> um, it's uh, it's actually really easy to understand what's going on. So the SLO, but here that it's not respected, is uh, for our voice API, and uh, there is a there is an SLO of 99.9 .9 requests, less than one second. And as you can see here, there is the uh, down below there is the error budget and really you can see that it's actually we are burning the error budget more faster than expected okay so the line is like the optimal burning of the error budget okay so you can burn each day you can burn a bit of error budget and that's fine we, you, you don't need to page the engineers for that so it's calculated it's okay but in that case, something is wrong, okay? See, you can really see that we are burning way more than expected, and we are firing the warning alert, okay? So that means only, hey, developers, please have a look of what's going on. But it's not, we are not paging the, the, uh, the engineers. If we are going down below this line, then it's clear that we, need, we have something critical and we need to page the engineers. Um, yeah, with that said, it's uh, another cool stuff uh, is that the um, uh, SRE uh, mm, have this principle of post-mortem, so when there is an incident or so on, there is a, a post-incident review, there is this blameless culture, and in Swisscom we have this, uh, we have this blame, blameless culture. Um, I mean, it's pretty clear for us. Uh, there is also this fucked up night <laughs> that we all that we do sometimes in cities. So when engineers comes up and they they basically said what happened, they explain the post mortem and uh, and together we learn from the mistakes. And it's really blameless. It's really they are up to. Um, they can really say everything, uh, all the problems they they uh, even if they created some problem like by changing some configuration or so on. Uh, yeah, like I said, it's, uh, they are really open. I mean, the post-mortem are um, open to analyze for everyone and to check. And yeah, we usually tag the um, name there and it's really, again, blameless culture. So we don't blame anyone and we learn from our mistakes. And that's it. So in the end, the company, after checking out some SRE techniques and uh, some of the SRE methodology, they finally were able to ship their product in a reliability, in a reliable way. And engineers and DevOps were happy. And yeah, they had a party in the end, and they <laughs> and they finally uh, they finally did it. Thank you. ancora un minuto per ok there is still one minute if you have questions or so otherwise you can find me at the Swisscom booth down there uh, yeah yeah so we uh, we actually we are using a tool in uh, sorry uh, we, we are using a tool and uh, ah ok Simple question. Yes. Is that dashboard available online? Is it yes. open source? Or? Yeah, so um, we are using a tool to generate the, uh, the definition for all the SLO and so on, and also the dashboard, uh, it's also open source, yes. So, yeah. yeah, because the permission rules can be, uh, can be complicated to maintain, to, to maintain uh, all those rules because um, there is this multi-window, multi-burn um, uh, technique 
yeah, uh, technique which is uh, pretty complex. So it's a set of rule. If you burn more than uh, X error budget under some specific time, for example, so you need to uh, create all these rules by hand, and they can be complicated to uh, to maintain. So usually they are generated, yes, and also the dashboard. Okay, thanks a lot.